Hello and welcome to Paint Basket TV, our very first edition of our brand new TV show, where every week we'll be updating you on everything that's happening in the art world. We'll tell you what's new at the Paint Basket, we'll introduce you to some cool artists and some awesome art websites. We'll obviously answer your top question of the week and throw in tons and tons of art tips and art marketing tips along the way. So let's get cracking and tell you what's happening and what's new at the Paint Basket this week. In the last while we've had a busload of new guys join the website. 34 in the last week alone. That's stunning. Welcome to the site guys. If you haven't said hello yet, head on over to the forum. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Upload us some of your paintings and your drawings. Let's see what you got. This week Dennis has also uploaded a pretty cool tutorial. If you're doing watercolors and you're sick of making boo-boos and can't fix them, He's going to show you exactly how. There's a link below this video. If you haven't seen the video yet, go and take a look at it. Then this week I've also been lucky enough to review Christopher Sears Pencil Portrait Mastery course. So below this video I've got a link for that. You can go and read the review and see what I thought of the course there. Now let's head on over and take a look. Who's our top artist of the week? Our top artist this week is none other than our very own Dennis. I threw a few punchy questions his way, so let's see if he bobbed and weaved or if he threw a few answers back. My first question to him was, how long have you been an artist? And I've been drawing back way far as what I can remember. I started actually in about 1944, and that's about, what, 67 years ago. And I was fortunate to have the encouragement of my late father. Although he himself did not draw or paint, he obviously had seen the latent talent in me and he decided then to, to help bring it out. And I've been painting since 1946. Now that's also about 65 years already. When did you decide to start teaching art? After I retired from engineering in 1993, I started full-time teaching in art and eventually I had a waiting list of two years. I had eight classes of nine each which gives a total of about 72 pupils and after a time, a year or two, I scaled it down to about six classes per week. So what made you decide to franchise your studio? But then, yeah, about nine, in the two, year 2000, Nolan came to me and said, Dad, come, let's franchise. I didn't want to. But he eventually twisted my arm and he became the, um, the, the, the pilot plant, as it were, for approximately about two years where we really honed all the skills that we needed. And then we, then we went uh, national. And uh, from that we became the first uh, in the world to franchise a fine art studio and up until this moment, at the moment, I still don't know of any others. Maybe they are, but we have not come across them in all the years up until now. We changed our name then from the Freeway Park Art Studio, which was in the area of Freeway Park where I was, very localized. We changed it to the Paint Basket to become a, a, a more a national name where you could apply it anywhere. And then in the end, what happened was we uh, got we had five studios, and with a, a combined total of approximately 250 students that would come to the various studios, their classes each week. You recently immigrated to New Zealand. Tell us a bit about that. And then in May 2009, Anna and I landed in Auck in Auckland and uh, settled out in Torbay, just on the North Shore city. And it was afterwards I learned that I was the oldest uh, at 74 to have received the long-term business visa for New Zealand. And in a couple of weeks I'll be turning 78 
And all going well, I will still be teaching until I'm over 100 and still going strong. In August 2009, I opened my studio here in uh, Torbay, uh, having to start from scratch all over again, from a well-established studio to one right from the very beginning. Soon, we will be have a fully established studio here, and uh, then we will be able to even give more to you. Dennis is quite a gutsy old fella, don't you think? Emigrating at his age. Happy birthday for this week, Dennis. Now, I think it's time we throw in a really cool art tip. The paintings that you make to sell need to have repeatability. In other words, if you've created a look for your paintings which sell well and the people like, you need to be able to create that same look three months, six months, a year, even ten years down the line. So if the guy looks at the first painting and your last painting, they must all look similar. Now a big part of that is the colors that you've used. So what I do to make sure that I get that repeatability in my paintings is I jot down exactly the mixes that I've used to create the paintings. So let's use my cherries as an example. What I do is I make myself a card like this. Now on the card I've got all my different colors that I use in the painting and next to it I've written down exactly the mixes. In other words, I've written down, I've written down the make of the paint that I've used, the exact color and the exact percentage. So what I've done is I've sat down and said 25% of this, 25% of that color and 50% of the other color. So it doesn't matter if it's 10 years down the line if I can get the same brand of paint and use exactly the same mix. I know that that cherry that I'm going to paint today looks exactly the same as the one I painted a year ago. If you do that in your paintings, you'll always have that repeatability and that consistent look that makes your art look unique and instantly recognizable in any gallery anywhere in the world. Now let's move on to this week's top question. This week's question comes from not off our forum or off our website, but from our YouTube channel. Ziad asks, Hello Nolan, I would like to know more about complementary color theory. We know blue's complementary color is orange, so if I want the blue color in the shadow, I will use orange. But what about warm and cool? For example, ultramarine blue is a warm blue. Cobalt blue is a cool blue. So will I need to add a warm orange to the warm blue or cool orange to the cool blue? And if so, can I use any warm orange to the warm blue or any cool orange to the cool blue to achieve my shadows? I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say in this complicated message. I'll be very grateful if you can respond to my message. Thanks from Ziad. Okay, Ziad, let me show you what to do. Ziad, you're 100% correct saying that when you're working with a cold color and you want to shadow it, you'd need to use the two cold colors to shadow it. For example, in your blue example, you would use the cold yellow and the cold red to make yourself a cold orange. Then the cold orange can be used to shadow the blue. Personally though, the reality is I only keep one orange in my box, I don't know about you, so I would use my cadmium orange that I've got available and I would shadow any blue, whether it's a warm or a cold one, it doesn't matter. But now let's turn it on its head. Let's say for example, I want to shadow an orange. Now I do have a cold blue and I do have a warm blue. So I would, if I've got a warm orange, I would shadow it with the warm blue, the ultramarine. If I'm working with a cold orange and I could sh then shadow it with the cold cerulean. So I hope that makes sense yet. It's 
the rule, but if you don't have the correct color, just use what you've got, it's fine. Well, unfortunately, that's it for the first episode of Paint Basket TV. I hope you've enjoyed our new format show. Please let us know what you think. Leave your comments in the box below. Tell us what you'd like to see. Ask us a question. Let's see if we can answer it. I'll see you next week. Have a great week. Paint Basket TV.